Well, hello and welcome to McLennan Park in Papakura for coverage of the 77th New Zealand Archery Championships. And we've reached the Olympic class category, the recurve format, which will see gold medals and bronze medals decided in both men's and women's competitions. We've had the compound and the bare bow. We congratulate all the winners of those classes, but we now move to the recurve class. And we're going to uh, start very shortly with the women's bronze medal match to be followed by the gold medal match and then we'll roll straight through to the men's. The targets are back at 20 metres from earlier today back to the full 70 metre distance. That target at the end of the shooting range 122 centimetres in diameter and here is the uh, ma the matchups for today. You've got Catherine Watson against Olivia Sloan in the bronze medal match for the women's. That's to be followed by Julia Harrison up against Olivia Hodgson, and then that will go straight through to the men's with Riley Griffiths up against James Gaze of Australia, and then George Fong of Fiji up against Aston Darcy of Australia for the men's title. With me in commentary is Kushla Matheson, who is World Archery's Oceania Development Agent. Good afternoon. Nice to have you here, Kushla. Great, thank you. And uh, first of all, it's pretty good conditions, isn't it? At least we've got a lovely sunny day. We do have that little breeze which continues to blow kind of across from right to left as we look at it. We can just yep. see those uh, little yellow flags on the targets at the end there. Yep. Uh, so, but, 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 but all in all, it's looking pretty good, isn't it? It looks like a really good day for a match like this. Um, good conditions. And, yeah, that breeze is not going to be too tricky for the archers today. Which is really good indeed. All right, so uh, we've got uh, the creme de la creme here of this competition this year. And uh, I guess you would have kept a close eye on the on the play yesterday and the results. Kush, what have you made of the, uh, of the, of the archery so far? It's been a really tight competition this year. Um, it's good to see that the juniors are stepping up, um, competing well against the senior women, giving them a good challenge as they prepare for their big international events coming up uh, in the next couple of months. Yes, indeed. And we've got uh, a couple of... Uh, 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 quite an even spread of talent at the moment in the women's competition in particular. Catherine Watson, for example, here, who's competing for a bronze medal, is a 38-year-old, a but uh, is the, was the number one seed, but couldn't quite make it to the uh, to the final. That's right. Yeah, it's always interesting. We have the qualification rounds, but it, it usually is indicative of, of where people will end up placing. But in this competition, it's been tight and um, have shaken things up a bit for these final matches. So here is Watson versus Sloan. Catherine Watson, the taller of the two archers, wearing the white. She's based in Melbourne but uh, is a Kiwi and we're looking forward to seeing her. She has a world ranking at the moment of 324. She's only started the, the sport in recent times, 2016. And uh, she got through her first, well she had a bye in the first round, got through over Kelly Atkinson in her first match, and then but lost to Julia Harrison in the semi-finals by six set points to two. Mm. And now Olivia Sloan is going to go first in this match, and she starts with a nine. Just reminding you yep. once again, if it hits that line, it defers to the higher score. Now Watson. Oh yeah, she's pushed it out to the left a little bit with into the blue there and as a six, so I think she's perhaps a little bit thinking too much about the win today. Sloan gets a six in her second yeah. arrow. She's just 17 years of age, ex Christchurch Girls High School student. Yes. Wow, well, maybe overcompensated yeah. there, Watson. I think they just need to settle their nerves a little bit in this match. Sloan shoots out of the aim true club in North Canterbury. Yep. So Watson here, 24. She can't win this set, but she has ended with an eight, her yep. best arrow so far. So 23 points out of 30 there for Sloan and just the 19 for Watson. So yep. Sloan will take the first set and yep. claim the two set points. It's always a nervous time for the archers, isn't it, Kushner, <laughs> at the start? It is. I mean, you're desperate to start really well. You'll love one in the yellow zone just to settle and calm everything and just reassure yourself that you're actually, you're reading the, uh, the conditions and the, and the environment nicely. Yeah. It's always that head game of, you know, shifting to a new venue from where they've been competing during the, the rest of the weekend. 
um, getting used to the surroundings and of course you know the media and the crowd and that just gives them a different environment but it's great for these archers as they prepare for the for what they've got coming up this year yeah it's a big year isn't it with two remember spots quota spots secured by New Zealand for the Olympic Games yes and uh, that was uh, a fantastic effort at the Pacific Games last year when that was able to be achieved but uh, we don't quite know yet whether that means that we will actually have some archers at the Olympics or in what disciplines they'll be involved with. So a lot of that to play out over the next uh, little while. And the selectors will be looking at an event like this, won't they? To Absolutely. To yeah. help shore up their minds. Yes, yes. They'll be watching the archers over the their international season. And, and this is sort of the beginning. Um, there's a few of these archers will actually be flying out tonight, um, heading to a, a pre-Olympic training camp in the U.S., um, which culminates with a tournament, which again um, is an opportunity for them to, to reach those qualification scores. Yes, indeed, and that will be in San Diego. Yes, that's a nice shot there. Yeah, Watson starts, uh, that's her best arrow so far. And uh, both of these archers will have their eyes on possible Olympic representation, there is no doubt about that. Yes. Now, Sloan, meantime, beat Annette Gibson in her first match, six set points to nil and uh, lost to Olivia Hodgson, the 6 seed, 6-2 in the, the semi-final. That's gone to a low seven there for uh, Catherine. Or Catherine Watson. That wind is just a little bit inconsistent at yeah. the moment. Yeah, just seeing the windsock actually spinning in the other direction now, so um, the archers will be trying to, trying to judge that as well as remembering their own shot process as they work through. But Watson looking good here for a... That's a nice grouping. It is, and uh, she's locked this set up with a score of 24. That can't be overhauled by Sloan. Mm. Looks like it might have just missed the line. Just under there, I think. We'll just have to get our ISO magnifying glasses out there and put out there an eight asterisk there. So, um, so Watson scores 24, and Sloan at this stage scores 20. Mm. All her arrows underneath the target. Yeah. Underneath the horizontal there, yeah. Kushla. Yes, so sometimes with the wind coming in from a particular direction, it'll just push the arrows down. Um, it's just a, one of the many things that the archers need to be considering when they're standing. 70 metres is a long way for that small, small arrow to be flying through the air. There's, it can have a lot of effect on it, um, depending on the poundage that they're shooting. Um, the arrow size, the fletches that they've got, there's everything that is, is part of this complexity. Um, it's quite a complex sport when you start putting all those pieces together, but they seem to be adjusting well, and now it's um, two points each. Yes, indeed. So Sloan taking the first set. What's in the second? We're at two set points all. Both these two have already represented New Zealand too. Catherine Watson competed at two World Cup events last year in Berlin and Antalya in Turkey. Mm -hmm. And she's also at the Indoor World Series as well, and Sloan actually competed at the World Championships in her Tongenbosch last year. Yes. So she will go first in this third set. Right in the heart of the eight there for Sloan. Mm. That wind just getting up again now, yeah. and it's inconsistent, very strong as Watson lines this one up. Yeah, the difference here from what they've been in for the last couple of days is that um, with the finals, they've got the alternate shooting, so they only have that 20 seconds to get that arrow off. When the, Oh, nice shot there. Uh, whereas when it's the, the ranking round in competition, of course, they can time it and, and take a moment waiting for that gap in the wind. Uh, it's better shooting from both archers in the last arrows. Sloan at 10 here will wrap up this set. And she's got back-to-back oh, back nice. tens. Wonderful effort from Sloan. So she'll win the third set. Watson can't overhaul her. So Sloan with 28 out of 30. The youngster showing she's got some talent. Yeah, I actually understand that Olivia's taken a bit of time off from her studies this year so that she can just focus on her international archery for the, 
for the beginning of this year, and it seems to be paying off already for her, as she said, it was in on that last set. Well, it's a magnificent achievement for Olivia Sloan to get to the World Championships. She's the youngest ever representative for New Zealand at a World Full Senior World Championships, which is pretty amazing. Absolutely. And great that archery in New Zealand would back someone that young to... Yeah, she's performing well, so um, she's, she's definitely earned her place on the team. <laughs> so topsy-turvy now. So uh, Sloan now one set went away from winning the bronze medal. So Watson's equation, well, she can't lose another set. She either needs to tie this or win this to prolong the match. So that's where it is. No tens for her on her scorecard just yet. Sloan with those back-to-back -back tens just a second ago. That will give her some good confidence going into the set. It's deceiving that camera angle. That is a long way away <laughs> if you stand on the shooting line. I'm telling you, cover the target with your thumb. Yeah. That's nice. Looks like she's just got that on the line there. So that's nine points for Watson. Still no tens for her though. No. That one's just picked up with another gust there. She's pushing that arrow down. Six mm. for Watson. Just a little bit inconsistent, yeah. isn't she? Solid yeah. shooting from Sloan. Watson really needs more something in the yellow zone here. To have any chance of winning the set. And she's got a nine. Yeah. Or is it? Looks like it's grabbed the line. We'll give her a nine. 24. So a nine or better will get this match won. And she's won right. it with a ten. Brilliant. That's inside the circle. She's got an X on her final arrow. Well, that means she wins the bronze medal. That's good. What a way to win it. Fantastic final arrow there. Well, three of her last five arrows were tens yeah. from Olivia Sloan. That's pretty decent shooting in these gusty conditions. That's really, she's managed that really well. So that will get it done. Her tan shakes mm. at the shooting end. All <laughs> confirmed now. And Olivia Sloan, the 17-year-old from Canterbury, has got the bronze medal, defeating Catherine Watson by six set points to two. Well, it's pretty good effort from Sloan, isn't it, that Kushler? Is, that's really good shooting from, from Olivia there. Holding her confidence and getting her focus and getting her, her sights on for those last, those last couple of ends to take the win there. Well, three tens out of five is very good indeed yes, to good. end the match. Sloan set the tone with a nine early, and it was a good effort from her. Looks like she's got some promise. <laughs> I think so. She's she's been working hard, and she's been um, maybe a few few years experience on Catherine, despite their their ages. Um, you know, Olivia's been been around the sport for a little bit longer there, and. Um, well, yeah, I see. She started as an eleven-year-old, yeah. and got inspired to take up the sport after watching the London Olympics archery at the London Olympics. Thought yeah. that looks look like looks like me and. Here we are all these years later, and she's yeah. getting the job done. Yeah, absolutely, and she's on track for a, a really exciting year for her. So congratulations to Olivia Sloan there from Canterbury. Oh, yeah. We now move to the gold medal match in the women's recurve, and that is going to feature Julia Harrison, another Cantabrian, <laughs> up against Olivia Hodgson. Yes, also from Canterbury. So we've got the South Island finals here. Yeah, it's catching, isn't it? <laughs> Three out of the four archers from Canterbury. Julia Harrison, maybe a little surprising to get her see her go all the way into the finals. Yeah, so uh, with the uh, ranking rounds, they've, they uh, combined uh, the junior team divisions with the uh, seniors, which has um, brought Julia into this competition today. We now move on to the record of well, it's a... Uh, Going to be an interesting match, this one. Yeah. Hodgson, of course, has got some great success. 
Yeah, she's already got quite a, an extensive international career behind her in, in the archery world, whereas Julie is um, coming in from those youth divisions where she's had uh, had some experience and some, some good wins in the Trans-Tasman and Oceania youth competitions, so this is a good step. So there we've got Julia in the, in the black shirt with the fern there. Okay, so Harrison's on the right and Hodgson on the left. And uh, this is uh, how they got to the final. Harrison wins over Suze Sudheim, 7-3, Vanessa Jim, 6-2, and Catherine Watson, 6-2. And Olivia Hodgson beating Sarah Fuller, 6-2. Sarah Haywood, the Australian, 6-4. It's a good win for her. And then beat Olivia Sloan by six set points to two in the semi-final. Hodgson, the 25-year-old, been uh, representing New Zealand since 2015. She uh, is from Oxford in North Canterbury. And Julia Harrison shoots at the Grey Goose Wing Club. Canterbury University student yeah. and a junior Trans-Tasman team member last year. So it's going to be Harrison to go first. Now, Hodgson was one of those two archers that qualified those two quota spots for the Olympics last year at the Pacific Games. The other was Adam Kuluzny. Yep, yep. so they, they took out the match play competition there, which is the mixed match play where there's a, a male and female competitor shooting the same bow type. Oh, nice shot there from, from uh, Julia. Julia. Yeah, it was, but that doesn't, of course, guarantee them... <laughs> coverage or g g uh, uh, rather <laughs> guarantee them selection for the Olympic Games. No, no. So they've won the spot for New Zealand. Um, they are now that they are um, both both Olivia um, Hodgson and Adam Kalisny are part of the New Zealand senior team um, who are now competing for those competitions, for those places for the Olympic spot. Well, it's a great start from Harrison, an 8, yeah, a 10 and a 9. That's a really good shooting, a nice group there. <laughs> Hi, <She's> Mum. <laughs> <laughs> nice, Olivia. And uh, the radar, just a little astray there for Hodgson yeah. in that first set. So comfortable win there for Harrison in that first set, 27-20. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, Harrison only yeah. 19. Yeah. Another young youngster on the way up, Kushla. Yeah, another young junior. We've got a really strong um, youth coming through in, in archery in New Zealand, which holds a lot of promise for the future of the sport here. I see that Julie is actually being supported there by Adam Kulisny, who's the, our other New Zealand archer who won the spot at the Pacific Games. So it's good to have that. That uh, I believe he's Southland, so you know, <laughs> keep it, keeping it <laughs> keeping it down there, supporting each other. Well, that's great, isn't it? And it's yeah. good to have a good wide representation yeah. of uh, New Zealanders from right through the country. Yeah. So the agents are just marking the targets. Yes, just gratifying all those scores. Yeah. <laughs> Sets format, of course, in recurve archery. Yes. So, second set. Harrison, very impressive in who wins so far in this tournament. Hodgson here has a world ranking of 193, and that's her best arrow so far. First one in the yellow zone for her. Yeah. Oh, that's gone. Well, that's in the black that's zone. That's gone out to the black zone. Yeah. Four. It's going to take a big ask from Harrison to win this set now. It's okay. Yeah. There's nothing uh, with her in control of the set. Just good, solid scoring from Hodgson will get the job done. Out in the blue there. Yeah, I just maybe these conditions are a little bit deceptive as to what the uh, what these archers need to adjust for. Yeah, that's 
could be a seven. Could be a seven. It was a close call there. I think we'll have to leave that to the judge to the judge's magnifying glass. Well, if it is a seven, that gives you twenty three. It really it doesn't matter actually. That's a better last arrow it's from a better finish for Julia. from Julia, yes. Yeah. But um, in the end, Hodgson will level the scores. If you're watching archery for the first time, of course, scores are wiped after each, or each arrow value is wiped after each set. Purely on the set system. Yeah, so it's a good, it's seen as a bit of an advantage for the for recurve archers that they can just sort of compose themselves again and they come back into it on a clean slate, um, particularly in this instance, um, where they're sort of back to an even score again. Well, both sets have been won by decisive margin so far. Yeah. Of course, no count back in the sport either. No. If they are tied at the end of the five sets at five sets points each, we go to a shoot off. One arrow shoot off. That's always thrilling. That's always exciting to Closest watch. to the centre wins. <laughs> yep. Of course, we did see, uh, we have seen a few shoot offs actually in the uh, earlier rounds in this year's nationals. Yes. That's real, it, it's encouraging actually to see those because it just shows the, the closeness of the competition that we've got here in New Zealand and the high calibre of the archers that we have competing. So all important third set now. One set each. Harrison to go first. Remember this is the gold medal match for the women's recurve. That's nice, a strong shot from, the, from Julia there. She's got a sense of humour, isn't she, <laughs> Olivia? She does. She's got a six out there. That's a good temperament from Harrison. Yeah. Struggle with their first two arrows in the last set. Harrison has got a four point advantage at the moment, so anything higher than a seven will win the set for her. Yeah, yeah it's good oh shooting. Yeah. She's done that with an eight, yeah. So Harrison's got the score of 25. Again, even if Hodgson gets the maximum here, she can only get to 23. So 22. Be her score. Well, it's important not to get down on yourself at any <laughs> stage, Kush. Okay, she's <laughs> down two sets to one. She knows yeah. the circumstances now that she that I have to play out if she is to win. But it's really important to back yourself. Absolutely, it's it, as much as it is technical. It's also a real head game, um, especially when you're coming up in these, these match plays when it, it's just one on one. You've really, each archer finds their own way. Some are very um, inside themselves and calm as, as they collect themselves for it. And others, you see here, um, Olivia likes to be, you know, distract herself a little bit with some, some chat, um, checking in with her coach. And just, you know, each archer has their own unique way of, of managing themselves in this situation. Yeah, Olivia Hodgson's coach, Petra Baker. Uh, Is she's, that Petra? Uh, she's got Julie behind her at the moment. Okay, okay. <laughs> there's, a, there's sort of a team, a team effort going on there. Um, I think Petra may be... Lurking out the back. Yeah, <laughs> getting ready for the next match. Well, Julia Harrison. Yeah. This is uh, her moment as Olivia Hodgson lines up to begin the sports set. She needs to not lose it keep alive her hopes of winning the gold medal it's a good start That's okay yep well the last time she started with a nine cushion she won the set Well, an opening now for Harrison. Nine or a ten now would make it interesting. 
four nice. is not far from the ten, is there it? So go, yeah. dead even, 16 points each. This set's going to be decided on this last arrow. Hodgson can't afford an arrow now. Oh, boy. So it's a five. Yep, so Harrison, to win the title, needs a six or better. Yes. Yes, he's done it. Yeah. There it is. It's Julia Harrison. That's our junior stepping up to this big competition with the senior finals. Wonderful effort from the 19-year-old. And uh, she has showed tremendous composure and temperament yeah. to win the women's recurve here. I think we just saw a, a glimpse of a rare smile from Julia there. <laughs> <laughs> She's earned it today. Well, wonderful effort there from Julia Harrison. Yeah. She was only the fifth seed coming into it after the ranking round, but she's arguably left the best form for her in two finals day, which is yeah. a brilliant effort. Well done. So that's Julia taking home a gold today. A great effort from Julia Harrison. Mm. And uh, she will win the national title, winning six set points to two. Wonderful day for Julia Harrison, the 19-year-old from Christchurch. Nice work, Julia. A Canterbury University student. Yeah. We'll uh, speak to Julia in just a moment. And uh, not too far away for, of course, the men's recurve finals, which will be upcoming very shortly. Okay, so I just see the coaches getting ready now for the, uh, as we're moving into the senior men's competition. Uh, coming up for our bronze medal match, we've actually got a bit of a trans-Tasman battle here as we have uh, Riley Griffith of New Zealand coming up against James Gaze of Australia. Uh, both these young men are, um, well, Riley's actually it's still in the uh, youth age bracket. Uh, James Gaze is uh, just just this year uh, started shooting in the senior competition. Uh, he's come across from Australia as this competition is actually part of the Australian uh, match play series. And he's come to, to keep his chances alive in, in that round. So from the New Zealand side, uh, Riley's actually in the New Zealand development team this year. Um, he'll be heading off to some of the Asia Cups uh, in the region as he's uh, continuing his, his, uh, his international career. Last year he, he uh, was in the uh, Youth World Championships. He shot as a uh, cadet. So we're just heading over to uh, catch up with Julia now. Uh, to see how she feels about that gold medal win that she's just achieved at this uh, Archery New Zealand National Championships. Well, we're with Julia now, who's won that national title. Julia, congratulations. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> well, an interesting day for you, because well, let's go back to the start of the competition. You're down the rankings a little bit after the ranking round, so uh, can you just talk us through what happened on the ranking round and why you left your best form to the match play? Um, I was a little bit disappointed with my performance in the ranking round because um, I shoot a very low poundage bow, so I get really affected by the wind. So I was having a hard time trying to get my arrows to go where I wanted them. So um, I figured I'll do my best in the ranking round and then come out as hard as I can in the match play, fight my way to the top. Well, you did really well because you beat some higher ranked opponents, including Olivia in the final today. Uh, I know you, you know her quite well. You're both from Canterbury. So tell me what it, uh, what it means to you to beat her today. Oh, it means a lot. I've come across her a couple of times and I really just cracked under the pressure because I know she's top ranked archer. She's done international shoots. She's got a load of experience on me, but I just got to do as best as I can. Just bring out my best. So what was different today then? Um, I'm not sure. The wind dropped off quite a lot and especially with the big shelter of the bank over there, it really helps me to fight the wind. 
Well, Julia Harrison, national champion, how does that sound? <laughs> that sounds very good, especially it's the fourth year running and my last time as a junior. Well done. Congratulations. Thank you. Thanks, Julia. Looks like we're on. Coming up, men's bronze medal match between Riley Griffiths and James Gaze. So yes, we're looking forward to the men's now. And uh, this is going to be fantastic to see the youngster, the 13-year-old Riley Griffiths. Oh, well, we've got stat sheets and everything. I love it. 100%, mate. Don't you worry about that, Stephen. I'm sure you'd love to be out there in one of these matches, yeah? I did this last year. I didn't get a stat sheet. Uh, well, <laughs> so don't forget, folks, we have that, that uh, this match between Griffiths and James Gaze. And then we have the final to come. Those conditions. Still a little brusty at times, Stephen. Proving a bit challenging, do you reckon, for the archers today? Oh, yeah, super super challenging. It's so hard to to um, see from some from the cameras, but you never know what's what's going on. And they say wind is the same for everyone, but if you just get bad luck with timing and it's the light turns green for your time to shoot and it's a massive gust and then it turns green for them and it's not, then... It can be like playing on different fields sometimes. So it's um, these guys have obviously had to deal with all this to get here. They've, um, it was really windy yesterday, and both these guys shot well to, to get through to the stage. So it should be good. Well, on the right of screen, Riley Griffiths, the 13-year-old, and he's up against the Australian James Gaze, the 20-year-old from Victoria. Riley Griffiths beating, we had a buy into the first round. Bradley Foster, 7-1. Finn Matheson, 6-2. Lost to George Fong of Fiji, the ninth seed, 6-2 in his semi-final. And uh, James Gaze, well, he also had a bye in the first round. Beat Michael Turner, Tim Chant in a shoot-off, which is interesting. And then Aston Darcy lost to the, his fellow Aussie in the semi, seven set points to one. And notice here we've got career best, uh, career best stats, but they've taken an indoor score for James Gazers, which is out of a maximum of 600. And they've uh, used an outdoor score for Riley's, which is out of 720. So yeah. it's a little bit deceptive. It is. <laughs> but yeah, it should be a good match. Well, Riley Griffiths, the only New Zealander that's made a medal match in the recurve, Stephen. Yep. <laughs> what, what is, uh, as we get this match started, we need to talk about his age. He's only 13 and he starts... That's with an eight. What makes this guy so good at such a young age? Oh, it's not... Yeah, he's, he's definitely doing extremely well for his age, um, but it's it's not massively uncommon. A seven there from James to, to open up. Um, archery is not the biggest, physically strongest sport out there, so it is very possible for a young person who trains hard, and as you see, he's got, he's got lovely technique, and he works hard. He, he works as hard as anyone, and a oh, nice grouping there. Looks maybe a seven. Nice grouping there from Riley. He's going to have to try and adjust his aiming point, but that's a fantastic start from him. Looks like James has got a bit of the old um, shake and bake. Yeah, pretty tough, isn't it, when you see that? But he's adjusted nicely there. And throw in his first yellow zone score. Puts the pressure back on Griffiths here. Nice oh, shot from brilliant. Riley. Lovely. Well, Ex excellent work there. Perfect. So that, puts, I mean, that means Gaze needs a 10 to win the set. Nine will tie it, and, and anything eight. lower will lose it. And that is the uh, that is the cutthroat nature of the sets format. Great start there by Riley. That was that was really well done. A lot of good adjustment from his first two arrows, which are also great shots. Just uh, just a little bit wide, but that was a great adjustment to come back and nail that one to take that set. This is a real confident sport. So when you when you when you're confident and you feel good and everything lines up for you and. and and you, you trust your process and all those sort of lovely words, then, uh, then yeah, you can make it look quite easy. And, and Riley's certainly a, a confident young man, and, and he's working hard, getting good results, and he's got a, got some big plans and big goals, and just like James, really, to be honest. So it's well good to see them. Riley is already 
representing New Zealand at the World Youth Championships last year in Madrid. So a 13-year-old getting international experience in somewhere like Spain is quite remarkable in any sport. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a yeah. He did, he did pretty well over there too. It's um, it's good, good, good for him to go over there and make that jump and shoot against those guys. And and there's some really good young archers that are leading the sport worldwide that are stupidly young. So yeah. <laughs> so just just young and fearless and and not burdened with the. <laughs> the trappings of adulthood. Well, James Games, what Gaze wants to be one of those. He also competed at the World Archery Youth Championships in Madrid last year, and he also had experience at Naples and Italy at the university had last year too. It's another high eight there from James. Just struggling a little bit to settle down, but it is. It's not as blowy as it's been, but it's not. It's not great either. James is just coming off a second at the World Indoor Archery World Cup. Six for Riley. Might, he might have just been caught on a gust there. Doesn't look too phased. Uh, There's a good, good response there by James. It's very much a... That's right in the heart of the 10. That's his first 10 too. Bit of a gust coming through here. Riley's just trying to hold through it. That's not a bad result from that. That's good effort from Riley. You'll often hear people talking about a long hold if a, re a recurver is holding slightly longer than normal. In these conditions, it's not uncommon. Just waiting for that wind to get a bit more. Yeah, he's got a bit of a shake on here this time, James. Didn't look too bad. Yeah, good work. Well, that's a much better set. That's 27. That'll settle him down a little bit. And it's got that set locked away nicely for James Gaze, the Australian. So this is just a free one for Riley to, to settle himself. That looked all right. And out to that left side again, so... Potentially just getting blown around with the wind. So he here is where the, the size difference comes into play a little bit. And I guess that's age as well. Um, but, you know, James, the 20-year-old, uh, sorry, much taller guy, much bigger. He's probably shooting a bit more poundage, although I can't quote you on his poundage at the moment. Mm. Um, and whereas Riley's obviously a bit, a bit slighter, shorter draw length, which means less power, which means a lighter arrow uh, and a lighter bow. So he's more likely to be having to compensate for the wind a lot more than James will probably have to. Mm -hmm. and, and obviously he did he did great to, um, yesterday in horrendous wind and, and he's obviously done a fantastic job of overcoming that. And I'm sure he can again here too. Well, best of five set encounter, two set points each. Now to Griffiths and to Gaze. That's all right. I'll be, um, they'll both be fairly happy at this point I think they've obviously both uh, fired some good shots each and, and gotten a little bit f feel and I think they might be settling down now a little bit it's always hard stepping over from the practice range and having to wait there and suddenly up you know you're up and shooting and it's almost there's no time to think it's just bang 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 yeah exactly see Riley just checking his clicker there on the way back good work that was a good shot from Riley it's a nice eight Eights are pretty good today. It's, mm -hmm. it's a good shot. Eights are pretty good. Seven, seven out to the right. So we see that wind's died off a little bit, and now we're going out the other out the other way. So this is the every end's completely different for these archers. Well, yeah, the wind's more in their faces again at the moment. Yeah, and see Riley, another go good group, good shooting. He's obviously picked a spot and he's hitting it. He's doing really well. Well, Gaze, if he gets a 10 or a 9, fair play to him. Much quicker release oh, that, that time, that was and <laughs> that was the problem. <laughs> he didn't want that one to go. That was not the plan on that shot. Yeah, he laughs it off. He laughs it off. That happens sometimes. Well, with that here an arrow, Griffiths take a major disaster if not to win this set now. Five. Well, that might give him a chance. 21. Yeah, 10 will tie the set. Yeah, quicker at Gaze. than me. Oh, nine, unlucky. Just missed out there, Gaze. Just down low a little bit, but uh, Griffiths will get that one 21 to 20. Good stuff there. Riley taking a, a four to two lead, so it's very much on James now. He's got to win this next one, really, if he wants to, if he wants to stay in this. That's exactly it. Good work from Riley in his, in his first senior 
senior nationals match play final uh, and bronze final. Great work holding it together really, really well, shooting nice and strong. Yes, it interesting you touched on the age. They're so fearless, these youngsters, Stephen. It's incredible, isn't it? Yeah, Do yeah, yeah. Do you reckon yeah. they're more fearless than you were at this age? I didn't shoot at this age. <laughs> I didn't shoot at this age. I started, uh, I started Target when I was about 18, 17. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, no, nah, isn't it? No, nah, they train hard. I mean, both of them train hard, and, and uh, both of them are proven at this level. So it's, it's uh, yeah, it's very much a either one of them's game. So Griffith's up two set points. He's got a four set points to two lead. Two sets remaining, which means Gaze here can't lose the set. He's got a title win it. Yeah, title win it. Just has to shoot three nice shots and pick his spots. Wind's giving him a tiny little bit of a break here. Hopefully he doesn't over. Yeah, it's a good shot. Just up, just just a bit tall. It's a solid nine. It's a good start. Nice shot matching him. Riley matches him. He's doing what he needs to do. Just has to match him, really. I mean, he won't win on the set if he matches, but. Well, that's good shooting from Gaze, consistent. <laughs> he got away with that one. You could see he was just like, whoop, yeah, he get was, up, get up. He was talking well before it was <laughs> yep, <laughs> landed. Yeah. Yep. Oh, what a response Brilliant. from Riley. Ice water. Ice water, young man. Good work. Oh, and a six from six. James, and he he looks a bit he looks a bit confused on that one. I don't think he was expecting it to end up there. Well, Riley to win the bronze medal he can needs put a six. He can put this away. Or this is a shot to win the bronze medal. Looks happy, and, and it's he's a nine. Done it. Very well shot, young man. Well, Riley Griffiths, at the age of 13, has won the bronze medal in the senior men's recurve here at Papakura in the 2020 New Zealand Archery Championships. That is an achievement. Yeah, very, very well done from Riley. He'll be he'll be absolutely stoked with that, and so he should be. James looks a little bit a little bit miffed with that last shot, but um, put up a good fight. Well, and it's also the circumstances here too, Stephen. We must, I think, uh, reiterate here for Griffiths: two nines oh. and a ten in his last. Oh yeah, in, uh, yeah, set yeah. To win it. You'd be happy with that in the calm, pretty much, and uh, so that was that was very well shot. And he um, he looked really good that match. He looked really solid. A couple of little, a couple of little wiggles, but. Other than that, he looked in complete control and very clean. So, well done, mate. It's a, it's going to be a good one for him to build on going for going forward from here. I know he's got some, got some stuff planned. He's a member of the, of the senior men's uh, development team. So he's going to be going to some stuff this year, provided the coronavirus hasn't yeah. wi wiped everything out, because it's all in the Asia Cup and Asia <laughs> Asia region. Yeah, so sure. we're all on tender hooks on a few of those events. Um, our trip to Shanghai is looking a bit fuzzy. Um, but yeah, he'll he'll be um. And he'll be going on for year, years to come, that man. So this is just the start for Riley. Wow, wonderful effort there from Riley Griffiths to win the bronze medal at the age of 13. And unlucky James, good, good shooting, to, good shooting to get there. And uh, he got knocked out by his fellow countryman, who's now in the, now in the gold medal match. Yes, indeed. Well, back to school tomorrow, I suppose, for uh, Riley, is it? Oh well, bit of bragging there for his, for his schoolmates. I'm not sure actually. He might be, he might be coming to the states. We've got a, uh, a camp coming up. I don't actually know. I really should know that. But <laughs> either way, either way, he'll be, um, he'll be uh, smiling for a while after well that. Well, mate, he, he, he's one of seven, I think, shortlisted for that Olympic spot, as, as you are as well, Stephen. So uh, yeah, it's a, it's a long list. It's not a short list. No. Um, it's not. Um, it's the we're all on the long list, and and there's um, there's a lot of work to do for everyone involved. And I guess technically everyone on that list of eight has a chance. Uh, but yeah, it's very much a, just everyone just has to do the best they can and just see what happens. We're not exactly clear on what's going to go on. All right. Well, that moves us to a, to the gold medal match, and this will feature the Australian Aston Darcy up against George Fong, the Fijian. That is due to start very shortly. Fong is 30 years of age, born in Suva, debuting for Fiji at, on the international stage in 2006. And he's had uh, wins over Peter Emmanuel, 6-2. Beat my co-commentator, Stephen, 6-4. And then beat Riley Griffiths, 6-2.
in the semi final. Yeah, he shot good. He shot good yesterday. It was a it was a tough match, and uh, I had my I had my chance, and I couldn't put it away. And uh, well done to George. He's also side note. He is the Fiji archery president. So El El Presidente. Yes. Out here shooting. And he too could qualify a spot for Fiji. The Oceania Championships in, in April in Fiji. I think there's a spot there. Uh, well, he could qualify himself or this country in that um, in that event too. So George Fong on the left, and uh, his opponent is Aston Darcy, the 33-year-old from Canberra. Came into this match play as the third C, beat Nathan Kirk 6-0, Robert Elder 6-2, and then beat his fellow Aussie 7-1, James Gaze, in the semi-finals. Interesting fact there, Aston has shot against three, and well, there's a third Fijian that Aston has drawn in this draw so yes. far. So he's had good luck so far, so see how he <laughs> ca carries on as the, the destroyer of Fiji. Yes, first represented Australia in 2018. He's been shooting for seven years now, Aston Darcy. World ranking at the moment of 201. And has been at two World Cups last year for Australia, Colombia and Salt Lake City in the States. So he's got a bit of international experience behind him. Yeah, he's on the he's on their current their their, their Olympic tryout team. So I yeah. believe it's six, uh, and that's that he's got two events down and one to go. So he's very much in the battle for the Australian Olympic spots. Well, he would love to go back to Australia with a New Zealand title under his belt. Just to remind the selectors that he's in good form. So here's Darcy, starting first with a six. Six out right. Different location. And yesterday, Stephen, probably need to touch on that too. Bit of adjustment there, you would think, for the archers as well. Yeah, it's uh, oh, well, ev even Stevens at the start. Yeah, the, uh, it's a d completely different location, different wind, everything's different. So, which is you know fair play. Everyone has to deal with it the same. Good, good, quick correction there from Aston. He must have been quite happy with his first shot. First ten of the match to make a quick snap correction like that. Well done. And grouping from George, very good grouping. He just needs to needs to shove them over a little bit. Well, that's a good uh, a good arrow from Darcy. That will win him the first set, an eight. Let's see if George can make a correction to start this next end off. Yes, very good. So. Although we lost that one, he's found his he's found his range now. So hopefully, uh, of course, unless the wind just changes direction again, then he'll uh, know what he's doing next end. Yep, 24 Darcy total in that end, and well, that set rather in Fong, 21. Fong, a uh, silver medalist from the Oceania Championships in 2018. Yeah, shooting, shooting well here. This, um, yeah. he, he didn't have the best of uh, best of rankings, but he's, uh, he's, his, his match play has been great, and he's, he's stayed solid and shot nice quick shots and just kept his form together, and that's that's what this game is most of the time. So he's been doing doing yeah. well. Ford will be happy to be in this in this gold medal final. As, as well, Aston, this was for him and James were battling for the last place in the Australian match play series, which this is a part of. And so whoever won, whoever got highest ranked out of him and James in this event was going to then go into the final at the Aussie Open in a couple of weeks. So he's clinched his spot in that match play final just by being here. So um, good, good ramp, hence, hence why they made the trip. Okay. Uh, hence why they're over here doing battle because they are after those Aussie match play experience points. And I will see them there at the Aussie Open in a couple of weeks. Fong would have been much encouraged by that last arrow. Yep. Yep. New set. Clean slate. See if he can pick up where he left off. Right back over there again. That's wow. interesting. Shot there from Aston. He seems to be fairly well centered now. It's like a high eight from George. He's just missed the line.
Ten from Aston. Well Second shot. ten out of five arrows for Darcy. George really needs a ten here to put any sort of pressure on Aston going into the last shot. And he's only had one arrow in the yellow zone so far, and that will remain. Right out wide in the four there. So he's still struggling a little bit with this uh, change of location. So he did get back to the range quite late. He had only had about one end of warm up, two ends of warm up. He was nice, nice clincher there from Aston on that end. Takes wow. a four two, a four four nil, sorry lead. Yeah, he sure does. Sure does. In fact, he didn't even need to land, land that on the target. That's how dominant he was in that set. 28 out of 30. Fong back on 16. So what do you tell yourself in these situations if you're George Fong now, Stephen? It hasn't gone to plan so far. You're struggling a little bit. It's now do or die. What are you telling yourself? Oh, mate, the, uh, what, what am I telling myself or what should I be telling myself? Is that <laughs> well, you can answer that one either, either way you like, yeah. Somet sometimes it can be really hard because you can just be confused. You just, you know, that, that felt good. Or some, maybe he knows exactly what happened with those shots and he's just like, that's fine, you know. Either way, you have to trust your process and, and trust that you know and go back running through your mental checklist of how you deliver a good shot. And uh, the real tough situations are when you, you feel like you've done that and you feel like you've been doing good shots and you're, you're aiming in the spot that you've picked and it's not making any sense. And it can snowball sometimes and, you, and, and it can feed off itself, just like how when you're on a roll it can feed off itself and you can just start stacking them in there. Sometimes you don't even feel like you need to get it right and they go in there. So, yeah, George just needs to trust his process and pick that aiming point and stay nice and strong. Well, it's a dual dive for George Fong here. He's got to tie or win the set. It's a pretty solid shot from George. I hope that's given him some some confidence in where these are going today with this wind. Well, the other two sets, remember, he started with sixes. So yeah, yeah, yeah. He's definitely found it better this set. Bit of a gust coming through right on cue for Aston. Well done, hold route, held right through it, awesome work, solid 10. He looks pretty happy at the moment, it's going to take a big end from George to knock him off, I think. And that's unfortunate, he's keying out to that right hand side. Aston holding this one for a wee bit. And an eight, it's not his best shot, but he's, it's all he needs at the moment. Does, he's 18 to 13 at the moment. So he's got a five point advantage. This is a big arrow here, it's yeah. got to be big. And a seven, it's not gonna do it unfortunately. It's not gonna apply any pressure to Aston. Well, that means a three or higher will yeah. win the gold for Aston Darcy. That should be yep. comfortable for comfortable a man it is. is. Well, it's been a comfortable win here for Aston Darcy, the Australian. It was really well done. He, he, he was pretty much in the zone right from the get-go and, and wasn't really troubled by George at all in that match. And well done to George to, to, for taking the silver medal and getting through the, the, day, the day yesterday. And great achievement for him and well done and great shooting. And just came up a little short against Aston today, who shot really solid and, and, and looked quite untroubled by, by the conditions today. Well, that's exactly it, Stephen. Yes, he only really had one loose arrow, and that was his first arrow of the match, a six. The rest of them were eight or better. So there we are, Aston Darcy, the Australian, a comfortable winner of the gold medal match here in the men's recurve at the New Zealand Championships. It's an Aussie taking away the title. <laughs> yeah, well we, we actually, we really love it when they come over here because mm. it's, you know, there is a bit of a gap a lot of the time between the Aussies and the New Zealanders. So it's, it's really good to shoot against them. And uh, yeah, they're, they're tough competitors and they've got, got some good archers over there. So it's awesome to see them over here and, and, and that New Zealand was part of their match play series, which was really, really good. Well, stand by, we'll be having an interview with Aston Darcy in just a moment. Gonna have an interview with Aston Darcy, just a second. Yes, I will look at the people that the camera's pointing on and randomly comment on them. Hi, Chase. Marcus. Marcus turned up about two seconds before his bronze medal match. I don't know if that was in the in the live stream, but he was literally walking down the walking down the hill as his opponent was lining up in the start box. And so I helped him put his bow together and then he just ran over there and his first shot of the day was his first shot in the finals. That was uh, interesting.
I think I'll annoy those people if I comment on them. All right, well, with Aston Darcy now the winner of the national title, congratulations, Aston. Thank you. Thank you very much. Just really only one loose arrow, wasn't it? The, the, the first one that you shot, a six, the rest of them eight or better. You're happy? Yeah, yeah. I was just trying to uh, judge the wind. I think it was a little bit loose, and uh, my back tension was a little bit loose on that first shot. Just had to settle in. How tricky were the conditions today? Uh, well, it's uh, it's a little bit hard to judge, but it hasn't been too bad. It's actually a lot better today than it has been for the for most of the tournament. So. Welcome to New Zealand Day eh, with the windy yeah, conditions. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Well, what does it mean to you? I mean, you, you the whole well, actually, what is the backstory for you to being being over here competing in in, uh, in our title? Well, uh, this is the first year that the uh, New Zealand has had a leg in the um, Australian National Match Play Series. So winning this leg uh, gets me a finals ticket in um, two weeks' time in uh, Victor Harbour in South Australia. And big year coming up, obviously. You'd love to get to Tokyo, wouldn't you? Yeah, so we're going through the um, final stage of uh, Olympic selections uh, in straight after um, the Australian Open and the National Match Play Series finals. So that's in about two weeks' time. So, yeah, preparing and training hard for that. Well, well done, mate. Congratulations. Thank you. There we are, Aston Darcy, the winner of the men's recurve title. And that wraps it up here from Papakura today. We hope you enjoyed all of the classes that we've had here at the National Archery Championships for 2020. Thanks very much for watching.